Welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews in partnership with Roadrunner Sports, and today we're taking a look at one of On's thickest shoes. It's the On Cloud Eclipse. What's wrong with it? Before we get started, I do want to say that these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, no one had a chance to preview this video, and this file synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. The Cloud Eclipse is a brand new series from On. It's a ultra max cushioned neutral daily trainer. Great for those longer runs or for runners that need a lot of protection underfoot. It's actually On's thickest road running shoe and basically makes the On Cloud Monster look kind of small in comparison. So if you're a fan of On running shoes and want a little bit more cushion, that's where the Cloud Eclipse comes in. And it's also kind of unique for an On running shoe, which I'll touch on later in the review, just because there's some components that separate it from what we typically see from on. As far as the price goes, this shoe costs $180, which is on the pricier side of things for an Ultramax Cushion Daily Trainer, but kind of aligns with on's more premium aesthetic and just overall branding. As far as the stack height goes, we have a whopping 44 millimeters in the heel and 39 in the forefoot, giving us a five millimeter heel to toe drop, which is absolutely wild. This shoe has more stack height in the forefoot than some shoes have in their entire midsole. This is a large running shoe and sure does feel like it when you put it on. And again, this is one of On's thickest options. As far as the weight goes, this shoe comes in at roughly 10 ounces, which isn't too bad considering how large it is. Doesn't feel super heavy on foot, maybe a little bit bottom heavy, but otherwise I was actually surprised it came in at the 10 ounce mark considering we have about 44 millimeters of stack height. Moving on to the upper, I do think it fits true to size and is one of the most accommodating shoes around. You have tons of room to the midfoot and toe box, so if you have a higher volume foot, you will definitely like this. As far as the breathability goes, there are two different layers of fabric. You have the outer layer of engineered mesh, which you can see, and then there's an internal fabric liner, which connects directly to the tongue, so the tongue is fully gusseted. And even though we had those two layers of fabric, I thought the breathability was quite good, if not excellent so you should have a decent amount of airflow here. The tongue is fully gusseted, like I mentioned before, and is rather thin, with the exception of these two lightly padded foam columns that run the full length of the tongue that give you some place pressure protection. I do wish they maybe beef this up a bit or maybe give the tongue some additional padding just because it's already a large and slightly heavy shoe, so I don't think it would make that much of a difference, and I did have to pull these laces rather tight. Um, just because there's so much volume to this upper. The heel counter, rather tall, average amount of padding, didn't have any issue with heel lift, especially once I got the lacing system situated just right. Maybe a little bit of forefoot sliding just because of how much volume this upper has, but otherwise I thought it was quite comfortable and depending on your foot shape, especially if you have a larger foot, I think this will work quite well for you. And now for the midsole, because this is honestly probably one of the most interesting midsoles that have ever been created. The only exception I'll say, maybe like the Adidas Prime X2 with its two carbon fiber plates and 50 millimeters of stack height, but this has 44 millimeters of stack height and you can see directly through it with these massive holes. This looks very similar to the On Cloud Surfer and that's because it kind of is, it's just the larger version. This is a different kind of midsole technology. They call it Cloud Tech Phase because the holes are kind of slightly altered where they have much more compression to them. And I will say this is probably On's softest and largest running shoe that they have ever made. Feels a lot more like a traditional Ultramax cushion option. The other thing that makes this shoe unique compared to most other On running shoes other than the Cloud Tech phase is the speed board. So I'll bring in the On Cloud Monster, which does not have Cloud Tech phase. You can see the holes look a little bit different. It has regular Cloud Tech units like most other On running shoes. So it's going to be a bit more firm. On running shoes on the whole, typically a little bit more dense and firm overall. They also have something called a speed board, which is a plastic plate. You can see it here in the middle, which sits right below your foot. Basically this plastic plate helps stiffen up the shoe, helps stabilize things, but typically sits right next to your foot and above the midsole foam. That is different this year where they basically changed the plastic plate or the speed board to be on the bottom of the shoe. So your foot sits on all that foam, and then you have the plastic plate directly on the bottom, which really does stiffen things up, keeps the shoe from twisting, helps stabilize things, and helps you notice that rocker geometry. So it's a key distinction because I do think you start to feel that plastic speedboard directly under your foot from most other On shoes. And one other side note, the On Cloud Surfer, which does have uh, the cloud, uh, cloud Tech Phase midsole, does not have a speedboard. So 
this shoe is larger and has that plastic plate on the bottom compared to the on Cloud Surfer. So Cloud Eclipse, just a little bit larger there. The other thing I'll say is this shoe is rather noisy. With these large holes that collapse, you will get a lot of squeaking noises, especially if the shoe gets wet or if you're running in the rain. So be prepared for that. This is probably my least quiet shoe that I've ever had. And even though this is one of On's thickest and softest shoes, it does lack a lot of energy return, gives you a nice level of cushioning, but there's not a whole lot of pop or life to this foam or midsole setup, especially if you compare it to something like the SC Trainer with its lighter and bouncier fuel cell foam. This has a little bit more spring to it. So I guess they're technically both pleated max cushion daily trainers, and I do kind of prefer the SC Trainer if I want a little bit more spring. However, I will say I think that this 44 millimeter midsole just prevents any ground feel whatsoever. A solid cruiser ultra max cushion option, but I wouldn't say is the fastest or most energetic midsole that you can find on the market right now. However, what I appreciate about the Cloud Eclipse is its very aggressive rocker geometry that pairs with the speedboard plate we talked about before. And this shoe is incredibly stiff and does not want to twist a whole lot. I basically consider this a plated daily trainer. The other big thing is this has a ton of stack under the forefoot. Again, 39 millimeters. That's almost as much as some shoes heel stack height, which means it really doesn't kind of taper off once you get towards the forefoot. It feels like you have a lot of cushion up there. And again, I'll bring in the SC trainer, which I love this shoe. A lot of cushion through the heel and midfoot, but gets rather firm when we get towards the forefoot. And that is not the case again here with the Cloud Eclipse. It feels like you have plenty of cushion from heel to toe and it's a rather consistent feel. Moving on to the outsole, we have a lot of thick rubber coverage here for an on-running shoe with tons of surface area, especially when you compare it to the Cloud Monster, which has these lightly covered sections, which are very segmented. So I do think the grip here on the Cloud Eclipse is much better and I felt a little bit more secure on turns compared to the Cloud Monster. Again, for obvious reasons, just a lot more ground contact and some thicker rubber. So overall, this is honestly kind of like the On Cloud Surfer on steroids. The Cloud Eclipse is probably one of the most unique looking running shoes around just because what other shoe has holes this large in the midsole with this much stack height. The upper I thought was very accommodating, plenty of room to it. I do wish the tongue had some more padding as I did have to pull those laces quite tight to get a secure fit just because again, a lot of volume to the upper. The midsole foam, while providing an excellent level of cushioning, you have a ton of it, especially in the forefoot, didn't have a whole lot of energy turn or pop to it. It's not a very springy foam, and I don't think the compression of the midsole gives a whole lot of spring back, if you will. It's not like a spring. Uh, it's just a unique way of kind of hollowing out the midsole while kind of surrounding it with the Helion foam, which is quite soft, and this is honestly the thickest and softest on running shoe that I've ever tried. It basically makes the on Clown Monster look small and incredibly firm. These things are insanely different. You also have that speed board on the bottom, which helps kind of accentuate the very aggressive rocker geometry, stiffens up the shoe. And I think overall, this is more of just a cruiser ultra max cushion option. Feels a little bit more like a traditional uh, thick running shoe from another major brand where again, most on running shoes are a bit firm. So softest, thickest, largest, little bit bottom heavy on running shoe. And I think if for someone who likes the aesthetic, likes some solid cushioning underfoot, and appreciates a good rocker geometry, this may be for you. But at 10 ounces, and it doesn't have a whole lot of spring to it, I think there might be some better options, maybe like the SC Trainer. I think that's a little bit more pop and life to it in the midsole and a stiffer carbon fiber plate. So kind of depends what you're looking for. But Otherwise, again, yeah, just one of the most interesting shoes I've tried in some time. Well, that concludes the review. Let me know in the comments what you consider to be the most interesting running shoe of this year. I would love to hear from you. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.